Let's get some more inspiration from Pinterest. This series is all about taking inspiration from Pinterest and making it your own. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Let's go into my Pinterest inspiration board. And by the way, I have made this board public in the meantime. And I will link it for you below if I figure out how to do that. As well as my Pinterest inspired playlist in case you missed any of my previous Pinterest inspired videos. So let's go into my Pinterest inspired board. So I have 29 pins at the moment. I added a few new ones. It doesn't mean that I'm going to do all of these, but they are all definitely great options to look into. And maybe you can find something here as well that you might enjoy trying to recreate in your own style. So this here is the one I did last time. I made a card using this pin as inspiration, which is now on my acrylic shelf on my wall in front of my craft desk. <laughs> And today I wanted to tackle one that jumped at me immediately, which is this one here. How cool is this? So we can see if there is a blog post or more information about this post. So I'll click on read it. And here we see a blog spot page from Bliss and Gesso, Ode to Finnabare, Ode to Finn. Interestingly, when I look at this blog spot on my phone, I don't see all the information that I see when I go to the same link on my desktop. So on my desktop, I can see that the lady behind this blog spot is called Gail Price and she is a Finnabare brand ambassador. So obviously all of the products that she used are Finnabare. I do not see that particular pin on this blog spot, obviously these are pretty similar, but she also does not explain how she made this, which is okay because actually it's pretty fun to try to figure this out ourselves. I enjoy the challenge anyway. So this is what I'm going to attempt to do and I'm happy you're here to join me. We'll figure this out together. <laughs> So the first thing we need for our project is some kind of a portrait, obviously. You could look in a magazine, you could find something online. If you're really brave, <laughs> you could use a self-portrait. I'm not that brave. I don't have a self-portrait that I would feel happy doing this with. But I have another solution. I'm going to use this portrait. This is a scan of a portrait that I made in this notebook. Maybe you've seen the video where I challenged myself to draw 30 portraits in 30 days. So in here I have 30 portraits and she was the last one I made. So I made a scan of her. I will link this video for you below in case you want to see what I learned from doing this exercise. It was super interesting. And in case you want to follow along and you want to use the same thing that I'm using, you can find this one linked below as well. So I want to make a tag. I'm going to use a bigger portion of this portrait than is used in this pin. This pin is more of a close up than I will have. I know I want to use the left side of her face, so this side, and I know I want to cut it right in the middle. I'll cut it approximately here because maybe we want to add like some dangling earrings or something. I want there to be some space for that. And we could cut off a little bit from the top as well. And just a little bit from the left edge, maybe. So I'll cut out that rectangle first. Then I'm going to adhere this onto some cardboard. I just used glue stick on the back and cut that out again. And then I'll just cut the corners. 
Looking at the pin, I can see there is some texture paste on her face and her, like on her cheek and her forehead and actually all around her on the left as well. So we need some texture paste. I currently only have crackling paste, which I don't really want to use on her face. So I'm quickly going to make some texture paste by mixing up some gesso and some fine grain sand. If you don't have sand, you can also do this, for example, with baby powder. I don't have any measurements. I'm just going to see how thick I want this. The amount of sand obviously also depends on how thick your gesso is. This gesso that I have is very thin, so I need a little bit more sand. Getting there. Okay, I am happy with this consistency now. My choice of stencil is going to be this grunge mask from Studio Light. It has these beautiful swirls and it has some cool patterns here which look a bit floral. This one is called SLGR Mask 51. I will do my best to link this for you below as well. Another good option would be this one here by Tim Holtz, this swirly one. This is called THS032. Obviously, you can use other stencils as well. Maybe you have something with florals or other patterns that you can use. They don't have to be florals or swirls. Just use what you have. So we want some here on the cheek and all around here and also a little bit on top here. So basically in most places except for the eye here. Let's start up here. And then let's add some swirls here. I made way too much texture paste. Okay, this is tricky. I want to make just a swirl. I don't want it all over her cheek. I can always wipe it off, I guess. The parts I don't want. And then maybe some more down here. Oops. Okay, let's let that dry. So I have dried it in the meantime. And I've also added some spray film matte. Just because I wasn't sure, since we're going to be adding some wet media, probably. I just wanted to be sure that our print wouldn't get messed up. I'm not sure it's absolutely necessary. Maybe matte medium would be another alternative. But maybe it's not necessary to put anything at all. I just wanted to be on the safe side. So let's add some fun embellishments. It looks like in our photo we have a mixture of some metal elements and some die cuts. I went ahead and I chose some metal elements that I had in my stash. That might work. If you don't have any metal charms, you could also check in your stash maybe for some flowers or some bling. You know, something like this. Maybe you have some rhinestones or something. Beads. Maybe you have some die cuts with some petals or stars, hearts. Maybe you have a punch you could use. So there's a lot of things you could add to embellish around the eye that would look fabulous. So I'm going to try these metal elements. Let's see if I manage to arrange them. This moon I was thinking of would be really cool around her eye. It has the right size. I like how that looks. Then the feather we could add here on her ear. And the rest we could just kind of try to drape around like this. Maybe have some of the keys here. She has keys dangling down as well. I think that's super cute. Actually, it doesn't matter where her ear is. We won't see her ear actually. <laughs> and then maybe we could also dangle this nib here. And then I have this cute fairy in a moon. 
I'd love to add her as well. And then we have some flowers. Maybe up here. And then I have this round one. No, I'll leave that one out. And I have this adorable little dragonfly. I definitely wanted to add a dragonfly here because I'm using this kind of like a self-portrait, even though it's not a portrait of me, but I drew it. So I want this kind of to symbolize me. So it obviously needs a dragonfly. I'm not sure if that's the best spot. Or on her cheek? No, maybe like that. Like that. I think that looks pretty cool. And should we try maybe adding a flower or two as well? The smallest ones I have are these. They are super bulky. But I'm guessing this is not a tag that can go in a journal anyway, because already this is pretty bulky. So we might as well add some more. Mm. Oh, it's quite big. Let's see if we can make it smaller. Ah, this comes off. It's not less bulky, but it is smaller. Mm -hmm, those could be cute. Okay, let's try the other one as well. Let's take this off. And then let's cut the wire off. How about like that? Yeah, I like that. So now I need to glue all of this down and I'm going to do that just with some regular craft glue. It's a few hours later and the glue has dried pretty much. I think it's good enough to continue working with. And now comes the part I'm most nervous about because I'm not really sure how to do it. So it looks like she added some sort of medium on top in like this rust color and this turquoise, which is like one of my favorite color combinations ever. But I don't know how she did it. I'm guessing the gold, I don't know, the gold could be like a waxy paste. For example, like this gilding wax. I know this definitely works with metal. Maybe the turquoise is as well. I have no idea what medium she used, so we're going to have to wing this. And apparently she used matching colors underneath that she added to the texture paste. You see that, like the rusty color and the turquoise on her cheek, for example, and by her nose. I don't really have matching colors, so how can I do this? I have Rusty Hinge Distress Oxide in the ink pad form. I don't have it as a spray or any other liquid form, so I want to first try to get some of the background in that color. So I'm going to use a makeshift palette and add some of this on top. Spray some water. And then what? <laughs> then I could... Wait, I'm going to wear a glove. That's, that's what happens next. Okay, so I'm going to just let this run. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's right on the flower. I did not mean for that to happen, but that's actually fine. Okay, let's do the other flower as well. Whoops, the other flower as well. That was really not my intention, but hey, let's just go with it. Okay, and I can already see I need more of this. First, I need to get rid of this because I cannot put my ink pad into this wet here. So I'll wipe that on something else first. Okay, so I'm going to add some more. Add some more water. I wish this was darker, like a more rust color, because at the moment this is more like tangerine or something like that. This time I will try it with a brush, hoping that I have just a little more control. Hmm. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Nope. No, I'm not liking that, so, so let's go back to dripping it. Then 
And let's add some here. Oh, there's already quite a bit here that came from the flowers. This is really not the rust color I want. I want it to be darker. So I'm going to add some coffee spray from Eye Zinc. Oh, I should not have done that. I don't know if that's a good idea at all. Okay, let's try mixing this a little. Okay, now it's brown. <laughs> Not what I wanted <laughs> is turning into a disaster. Okay, we're going to embrace it. It's brown. Aha, uh -huh. this matte film that I added with the spray, of course, acts. At, oh, that's really great. That acts like a resist, so I can completely dab this mess off. Oh, that's really good. Except the flowers, of course, but that's okay. The flowers are nice. How else can we do this? I really love how the flowers look now. So my plan B is to try it with alcohol ink. I have this in the color butterscotch. I don't know that this will stay better on the surface now, but let's just try it. That's definitely more the color I was looking for. Yes. I'll add some to the flowers as well to make them a bit darker. Oh, this looks so much better. Do we leave some of the white? No. I unfortunately don't have alcohol ink in a turquoise, so I guess we'll just stick with this color. Oh, I really smell the alcohol. I also have caramel. That is the only other color I have as alcohol ink. And I want a little bit of color variation, and I believe this one is a little bit darker. So let's try dripping some of that in. I want some of that running down the tag. Yes. So this is what it looks like dry. And next I want to add some wax paste and I have it in this turquoise color. Yeah, it's called Colored Metallic Turquoise and it's by Craft Emotions and it's a wax paste. This one is quite soft. Let's see what we can do with this. Where do we put it? Maybe on the moon a little bit. Maybe on everything a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's try adding it on top of the texture paste. <laughs> Very interesting things happening here. <laughs> Now I want to make the color in her iris stand out a bit more. I'm going to try to do that with my turquoise ink. I have no idea this is going to work because of the spray I added. Oh, it's very dark. Oh, it doesn't look turquoise at all, does it? Oh. Maybe when it's dry? Hopefully. Yeah, it looks better when it's dry, thankfully. And now I need to darken the pupil. I will do that using black acrylic ink. Did I say acrylic ink? Acrylic paint. And I'm also going to outline the eye to make it a little more expressive. Hopefully I won't mess this up now. Mm 
I'll try to make her other features show a bit more as well. Like the nose and the mouth. And the eyebrow here a little bit. And I also want to make her lips a little bit more red. Okay, I feel like the hardest part is over. This was really nerve-wracking. <laughs> I want this tag to have a darker edge. And I'm going to do that using the same caramel alcohol ink. And I'll use it with a brush. And I'll just go around the edge. Okay, not a good idea. This is not working. Let's try edging it with rusty hinge and a distress tool. I don't think this is going to work. It works a little bit. Okay, let's do this and then maybe add another darker color over it. So by this time we are on our own. We don't need the inspiration anymore because now I just want to finish up this tag. I could edge it with my bronze gilding wax. Let's see if that will work with a brush. I don't think so, but let's try it. It's quite hard already, that's the problem. Yeah, this is not going to do anything as far as I can tell. Yeah, that's not how to do it. I'll try it using gloves. This is really, really hard. No wonder that didn't work with the brush. I think this is ruined, to be honest. This is super, super dry. Mm -mm. No. This is not working. But I do have this fast drying metal gloss paint in a bronze. What is it called? Brown gold. Yeah, so it definitely has a different shade. Mm, let's see. That's not very visible at all. Can you even tell that I added it? Yeah, I guess a little bit. Okay, let's try some good old walnut stain. Sort of. I also have this wax paste from Craft Emotions in metallic gold. This is a completely different gold. But I want to try to add some of that. This is way softer. Let's try to add some. Yeah, I am loving that. What you could also do what I've done previously is to emboss your metal. That works. I can show you an example. So I had this tiger and I embossed it with white. So that totally works. I did not know you could emboss metal. And let's add some here on the swirls. Oh, I love this. Now this is really coming to life. you see that shine? Wow. And in case you're wondering, this paste will not come off once it has dried, even on the metal. That's the cool thing about these wax pastes. I can really recommend these from Craft Emotions. I've had them for, I don't know, over half a year and they're still soft. Okay, I need to stop. <laughs> I am really liking this. So next I want to make the whites of her eyes a little more white and also here her teeth. I'll do that using titanium white acrylic paint. That's better. And I'm also going to try to add some of this turquoise metallic in her iris so that she has like a shimmer in her eyes. Mm, that's not really visible. Okay, it was worth a try. I'm trying to decide whether I want to put this tag on another background to have that peeking out on the edges. And I found one in here which is this one. 
and I am not sure do I like this or not. Let me cut out a piece that would just go around this and then make a decision on that. Okay, what do we think? Does it enhance it or does it take away from it? I think it enhances it actually. It looks more finished. Of course, I'm going to cut these corners off. I think I'm gonna go for that. I'll just glue that on. Then I'll just cut these off. And then I'm going to edge this again with walnut stain. And then I'll also edge it with my gold wax paste. I guess I didn't really need the walnut stain because we won't see that. Oh, but by doing this, I can also edge the top tag. I can do both in one. <laughs> So this is my final result. I am fairly happy with it. And I hope you give something like this a try as well. It is super fun and you learn a lot every time. Love you guys. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. Gonna let the sun shine